Covering Truth, and I am Pastor Forbes from Abiding Word Ministries. Um, this, of course, would be the first Discovering Truth telecast um, in the Third Republic of our beloved nation, the Gambia. Um, there are so, so many, many things in all of our hearts, and uh, I am trusting that the Lord will give me the wisdom, um, the strength to serialize a lot of what. Um, I feel would be crucial and important for us all um, to consider um, after all that we have gone through. Um, but let me start by saying that all praise and all glory and all thanks really go to God alone. Um, yes, he has used different vessels, different people, um, different scenarios and situations um, to keep us as a nation, today we are not on fire. Um, we are still one nation. Schools have reopened. Businesses are uh, beginning to settle down. Those who traveled are coming back. And um, I'm sure there's not going to be any story of people's things were stolen while they were away. And that only happens because God has helped us. My confidence in God Almighty stems from my relationship personally with the Lord Jesus Christ and the reality of God's counsel to us through the Bible. And so I draw strength from scriptures and many, many, many scriptures in the 66 books of the Bible. And as many as come to my heart, I will talk about them. The first one that jumps up is a favorite of mine is in the book of Psalms. Psalms is like somewhat in the middle of the Bible, and there are 150 of them, and Psalm 127 goes like this, except God builds a house, every builder and every laborer builds and works and labors in vain. Not that their intention is bad, not that they're even not skilled for the job or prepared or determined. It's just that, as we can all tell, in life, there are factors beyond our control. Only God knows the true intent of somebody's heart. They can say yes when they mean no. They can say no when they mean yes. And that happens for each one of us. So we must really not do a lot of finger pointing because our ability to keep our word and integrity comes from the fact that our lives have been um, submerged in the grace and the mercy of God by a personal decision which we made for Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Lord, and our Messiah to be our personal Savior and Lord. So that scripture puts it clearly like this, except the Lord God builds a house. Everybody is building in vain. It continues that except the Lord watches over a city, and that can be the country, that every security force watches, stays awake in vain. In other words, transition, prosperity, peace, togetherness, um, a sense of contentment is not just rested upon how smart we are and what we know. It is God. And that's why I think in my second or third telecast, as we went through this situation, um, I remember saying that it's good to see the beautiful t-shirts the Gambia has decided. They are also beautiful. But I wanted, I wanted, and I still want to say, God had decided. Because, ladies and gentlemen, whatever we do, we cannot remove God from all that happens. So we give him and him alone the praise, the glory for delivering this nation. We came so close, we were on the brink. And um, as somebody very close to me said, we are not better than Rwanda. We are not better than what was happening in southern um, Kaduna in Nigeria. We are not better than Aleppo. We are not better than what went on in Burundi and what's gone on in other nations. Um, and we are so tiny as a nation that we could have been overlooked globally while 
the world's greatest president was being inaugurated. People could have forgotten us, but it stands almost to show historically that never in the world, maybe since World War II, have the whole global community come together to make sure less than two million people have their franchise given to them as they freely decided it. Obviously, that puts a whole lot of pressure on all of us, and I'll be coming to that. I, I don't think I would need to be a great prophet in that because we all know it and we all feel it. Uh, but we want to thank God first and also thank him for the people that he used. Um, I remember at a point in time I felt very ashamed as a Gambian that presidents were just coming in and out of my country. It's like, you know, when is this thing going to end? And we want to say thank you to all the excellencies. And, you know, we as normal civilians can talk about what we see or what we saw or what we knew but i'm sure there were also underground diplomatic efforts letters being written phone calls and all that and sleepless nights and i'm sure as a nation we remain grateful for that we want to thank everybody the the electorate the ic officials of course the ic chairman himself the press the media all the civil society groups and everybody that came on board to say what was on their mind and uh, the security forces, the police. I remember, I think it was the, the Friday before ex-president Jamie left, I saw people jogging on the streets and it looked like, is this not the country supposed to be imploding? How come people are jogging on the streets and doing a thing? Because we were kept together by the hand of God and the mercy of God. And so we thank all who prayed, all who fasted, all who cried and all who wailed and wept before God, um, Gambian and non-Gambian and the global attention that we got. So one nation that um, didn't seem to be known globally was known. One person who was probably unknown three months ago, his name is on everybody lives, President Barrow, President Barrow, and we want to really thank him. And of course, um, congratulations to His Excellency President Barrow, uh, first president of our third republic. And um, thanks goes everywhere. The coalition, we want to thank them all. I also want to say that um, I may be I may have lost something in the mix of this whole thing, but in fairness as a nation, I think we also owe Honorable Mama Kande a lot of thanks because he, he put his life out there and he widened the playing field for the nation, for us all to see. Because, you know, sometimes as ex-president Jame was lamenting that how come this number of people didn't vote, some people will say that I didn't vote because I didn't want to vote for you. And most times when people refuse to vote, you know, because they don't like the sitting incumbent, most times they either sit and refuse to go to vote because maybe they don't really want to vote for maybe another party, but then they find what to them may be somebody who articulates seemingly their view or who seems to be a neutral candidate. And I pray that in the mix of all we do in the present and for posterity, we will remember that there were three candidates. And one has won, one is an exile, and I believe the other one, we owe him a lot of gratitude and his party for what they did uh, because they are all part of the celebration that we have. So whatever it is that takes our nation forward, I know we all talk about President Barrow, and we should because he's our head of state and commander-in-chief of the armed and security forces of our beloved Gambia, and I'm happy for that. And there are seven coalition leaders, party leaders, who put themselves out there. Any of them could possibly be a, presidential, uh, a president themselves, but they have, in biblical language, they put the... The, the, the vision first. You know, when you read the Bible, David, king, the second king of Israel, he had mighty men who could do wonders. But he says they all came together to make David king. And in making David king, they did not undermine him. And so while we thank um, everybody, you know, Honorable O.J. Jalo, Honorable Ahmad Bad, Honorable Halifa Salah, Honorable Dr. Aisatu uh, um, Toure, um, Honorable Maifati, Henry Gomez, um, Uncle Osei Nudabo, um, Antifatu Mata Tambajang, and everybody around, and uh, Mr. Adama Barrow himself and his family, who probably seven months ago had no clue that this was what was waiting for them, you know, and uh, our, our utmost condolence to them for the loss of their, their son um, during this period. But also, as I'm saying, we really also need to remember 
um, Honorable Mama Kande um, for what they did. I think they livened the playing field. And as Gambians, we must learn to begin to celebrate and celebrate our differences. As I was driving to the TV studio today, I was saying to myself in my car that, look at the Gambia. We are really not as divided as people thought we are. Maybe politically, for good measure, but we all came together. And other nations would have imploded, been on fire. So many things would have happened. And here we are again. And what seems to be our weakness has become a global strength. And as I am speaking today, I am aware that two nations, one in our region, West Africa, and another in East Africa, have decided to adopt the coalition strategy. The opposition part, uh, party leaders who feel that they can rule have suddenly started talking alliance because they see that alliance has worked in the Gambia. I hope we hold it for these three years. And by the way, let's remember that our bond our word is our bond. Three years is three years. And since His Excellency Adam Abaro, our president, was sworn in on the 19th, today is the 24th. Five days out of 36 months have already gone. And we're going to watch diligently like hawks that come um, January 18th, 2019. We must have a new president. So all the ministers who are going to be... Um, appointed legally um, based upon the constitutional provisions um, would land running. They have to take their feet running. And I'm glad for what we are hearing that um, permanent secretaries are being tasked to make sure they have everything ready, um, present permanent secretaries, that is, um, to make everything ready for the new ministers to come. Because it's Gambia. It's Gambia. As we saw, we woke up one day and 45,000 or more people disappeared from the country. That's Gambia. But thank God that we are all um, coming back. There is another scripture um, I want to quote from the Bible. Um, it's in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah and chapter 40. And this is what it says. The first word in that chapter is comfort. And so it says, comfort, yes, comfort my people, not pain. The time of comfort has come. And the word of God says, speak unto them my comfort. Shout unto them that their warfare is ended. Their iniquity is pardoned. As I said in my penultimate telecast, you know, what brought us to the point where we thought that is president, ex-president, Jamie living or not, what's happening? You know, we all got upset. Most people got upset. But, you know, the truth is that we were all guilty. We all created what we had. And that is why now everybody has become a hawk. Everybody is finding out what the Constitution says. Everybody is a journalist. Everybody is a policeman. Everybody, because we do not want to go back. And God is saying that he has forgiven the land. Because we have received from God's hand double for our problems. But this is what I like. In verse 3, it says we should prepare the way for God. And in preparing the way, it says the desert places, whatever that means in Gambian life, must be made straight so that a highway would come. Every valley, most valleys are depressions, must be lifted up. There are people who are in a valley situation now. There are people who can believe what has happened. Maybe they had an undue advantage for 22 years or not. They are still Gambians. They just have to wake up to the reality of life that can be better for us. And then it says every mountain and hill must be brought low. The mountains are high things. Sometimes mountains speak um, figuratively of pride. People who have, you know... Uh, <coughs> We lived in a country where we had phrase like, phrases like, you will face the full force of the law. And it's like we wondered why. And you know, people will beat their chest, you know, and do the same things it looks like we complained about the first republic. And so if we look at these two republics, we have enough material to decide that whatever was negative in the total of 51, 52 years almost 
will not happen. And so, obviously, the coalition government has a great task among themselves. They are all different. Coalitions are very difficult to work with. It's like putting together a resolution at the United Nations, very difficult to come with. But if we all put Gambia ahead, believe, we, believe me, in terms of grace, President Barrow will be empowered constitutionally and by the mandate of the people through the coalition um, to do what is right. Um, but if we are going to run a government where you know, we have to share, you take two, you take two, you take two, because you are seven, that will be 14. Every time you take two, you take two. Um, much as I believe in teamwork, I also believe that qualified people, regardless, must be brought on board. There is a government that has left, but there are people who worked in the government who are possibly institutional memory. And so we can't just shut down and bring a new one. There's got to be a transition. Unfortunately, we didn't have it as it should have been, as it happened in the US and so beautifully in Accra, Ghana, just two weeks ago. But this is what we have. But there must be transition. So it will be unthinkable for permanent secretaries, directors of parastatals, people in the police, the military, um, and CID, immigration, customs, all that, to hide things, to tell a lie, central bank, to hide things, to make things disappear, because it's going to be the same Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of us was affected when people moved. Every one of us. We were affected in our church. Everywhere people were affected, because it's the Gambia. So even if you chew an agreement and swallowed it. If you're chewing of that agreement and you swallowed it, apart from its medical consequences to your personal metabolism, if it so made the shops close and the banks close and the airport close, you can go nowhere. So we must quickly put all that behind us. And through the media, through GRTS, through all the media outlets, begin to talk forward talk Third Republic, believe Third Republic, and actualize Third Republic. We must not just leave it to a spokesperson who speaks maybe once a day on the television or radios. We must all come together and let it be our collective responsibility. Because as I said, I want to repeat, ladies and gentlemen, 36 months is a very short time. It's a very, very short time until the ship of state would have stabilized. Uh, it means there's a whole lot that has to happen. And so it might just be wise that on a need to meet basis, people should meet President Barrow. If a business entity wants to come into town, there should be a minister of trade that they must be able to meet. And not this thing that State House becomes everybody is going there singing praise, doing this and doing that. We are selling palm oil and all the things that we have done. If we are going to really have to have a thinking government that is able to catch up for, from what it doesn't even know because there's been no transition, you know, and maybe to see how we interface a budget that was read, which might be a possibility or might not be a possibility, not to talk of the reconscientizing of our people. You know, I remember one day I had a, a religious personality like me, and he was talking, and he said, uh, Sheikh Alaji Adama Baro. And I said to myself, We have started again. Because before he became president, was he Sheikh Alaji, was he called like that, or was he just called Mr. Adama Baro? And so from us, the religious leaders, to the praise singers, to the gewels, to all the things, the numerous public holidays, the naming of, you know, now we probably have um, 19th January Squire, 19th January Group. We should scrap all those things totally and face the Third Republic and build a bedrock for years to come. Gambia, what has happened to us is globally unprecedented. We are not strategic in economic terms. You know, as a friend of mine said, when they ask him, where do you live? He says, the Gambia. And they say, where is that? He said, the line between Senegal. That's how he calls it, the line. In that line, 
less than two million people and the entire world, the entire ECOWAS, the whole of the African Union, the UN, that's the whole civilized world. And so we must now stand up and be counted that we are worthy of all the assistance that we had. Normally when things like this happen, quote unquote, they're like crisis times. I, I do not have the best description for it, so forgive me for using the word crisis. What I mean is that there is every possibility that massive goodwill comes. So money comes, so things come in because it's like let's get government back on its feet. We owe it to the world and to ourselves and to our integrity to make sure that all monies that come in are dispensed in a designated fashion. If not, the cars that we are talking about, we will talk about them again. And not after 22 years, maybe after three years. The mansions we are crying about, are they going to be multiplied by seven? So we all, and I believe that um, the strength of the nation will be as strong as all of us coming together. And when you look at everybody who sits around that coalition table, I believe we have enough intelligentsia to drive this thing forward. And if we bring those who have served in integrity in the Second Republic and those who have been outside who have a global appeal and international expertise, you know, and the people who have helped in the diaspora, and the private sector people in the Gambia, people just like President Adam Abaro himself, who have run things nicely without having on. Bring on board Honorable Mama Kande. Bring everybody on board. We will do it. And while we are fine-tuning the wheels of this engine, inadvertently, some steps would be, some toes will be stepped upon, inadvertently, Maybe somebody who has been appointed might have to step down maybe after some time. If we keep the Gambia, the Republic of the Gambia, ahead of us, we will all enjoy. And so we are maybe on the sidelines looking on. But let me say, even us as a church, we are committed to continuing to play our role as we do from the sidelines. I really also want to say that the era of religious leaders trooping to the state house should come to an end. It's over. Let these people do their work. And if they need our counsel, they will seek for us. This thing of the government sponsoring religious trips to Jerusalem and Mecca and all that, I think we should tone down all that. This is not a village club. It is not a school. It is not Osusu. There is a lot we have done which we are all, all guilty about. But that era has ended. So we are back to the future. Let's re-steer the ship of state and move. And where we have to speak truth, let's do it. Not in an insulting manner, but truth. So let's do what is right. Let uh, the religious leaders, the mosques and the churches, we have our congregations, we raise monies, we can do our own things. Some are linked to NGOs. So we don't need the presidency to give us rice and chicken and turkey and guru and all that. Let's put all those things aside. Because they all have added... Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's difficult to tell somebody the truth when they have fed you. Let's just do our work. Let the diplomats do their work. So a businessman comes from a country that we do not know. He doesn't have to see President Barrow. Let him go to the Minister of Trade. Let him go to Gaipa. Some people want to do tourism. Let them go to GT Board when it's reconstituted with a vision that goes beyond displaying one jaw in world trade tourism things. Let's, let's get this thing right. Let's minimize things. You know, all over the world, when was the last time you heard that the first lady of UK or US presented gifts to babies in the hospital and, and, and all these things? 
Let that be left to social welfare. Let it be left to ministry of health. And you know, let's 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 do that. Musicians, use your skills to do other things. Don't I know all of you are waiting with your barrel songs, barrel songs. You see what we had at a point in time, we were not too sure what we could see on this television station because a lot of the footage was about one man and suddenly the one man is no more. And we were showing all things about tattoos and movies. Those things were there before. This should be a massive educational tool for our nation and not a propaganda element for the government in power. So there's a lot we all have to do. And I believe we'll do that. Schools must be non-political. The UTG, the University of the Gambia, all the faculties. Look at the politics that we, we, we were fed with in the UTG. It is all that came to haunt us. The chickens came home to roost. And we all say, not them, not them, not them. Ma lila la mubala nyu, mo abal nyu sundeka. But we all contributed. The AI companies. The Gori Compins, we all did that. Ministers of state who were dancing dagas in festivals. If we visit those things and play those things now, there will be tears running down our eyes. How could we do that? How could we subject ourselves to global ridicule for cures and all kinds of things that the drama that was going on here. We need to decide that we are going to change. That I am going to change. You are going to change. Let the National Assembly be an honorable people. Not a bread and butter people. An honorable people. Because if the, if the constituency had spoken, it was easy. As somebody said, it's easy to say, okay, we are now doing an extension of deadline and we are reconvening. And I don't know when I last saw a gazette and how fast things happened last week. What happened when we came out of the Commonwealth? What happened when purportedly the name of the country was changed unilaterally? Where was that assembly? Not to talk of the last minute resignations from the executive. Not to talk of the judiciary. Ladies and gentlemen, we were almost like a failed state. And we are all guilty. But thank God that we've put that behind us. And practically, to in all intents and purposes, let's put it behind us. But we take stock of all we have all done. And now move forward. And now move forward. This is from my heart because I love my country with all my heart. And I believe that each of us will play our little role and we'll see that we are still one country. We might have divergent views politically, we are still one country. May God help us. May God's mercy continue over us. May God's goodness continue to us. And to the young people, let me end by saying there is still hope. All those people who ran away back way, one day they should all be able to come back and make it the praise God intends for it to be. Until I come your way next week, by the grace and mercy of God, have a good evening, everybody. God bless us all, and good night. Television services, <laughs>
Embracing this ground, my people, my town. Freestyle. from the Gami Radian Television Services and this is the Predict and Win Show courtesy of Gamsel, your national GSM operator and as you can see I am super excited to be on the show today and with me I have my co-presenter who is no other than Falu ML Janko, better known by his sub brigade as DJ Sanitor. Sanitor? Thank you very much for two. It's um, exciting to be with you too and uh, <laughs> mobile data to enjoy the fastest internet in the Gambia. Wow, this is cool. Now, with your Gamsel line, you will enjoy more whenever you recharge Gamsel $100 Scratch Card. Buy Gamsel $100 Scratch Card now and have 50 megabytes mobile data for free to browse the internet with speed. And remember, every $100 Scratch Card comes with $100 credit and $50 bonus, plus now 50 megabytes free mobile data. Come on guys, double up your extra Trust today by buying Gumsell hundred dollars is crash card. Gumsell, yai borom. Introducing Gumtel Corporate Internet for home use. See who everyone at home can be online at the same time and for less than you think. Now daddy can be home early and mommy and dad with the family can all have fun together. You can now complete your work at home with our stable, secure and super fast home broadband fixed wireless internet. Home internet couldn't be faster. 
download, stream videos, research, play games, learn online and work from the comfort of your home. You can do with the internet. Join Gumtel Sihu today and enjoy the fastest home wireless broadband internet at an affordable monthly subscription. Gumtel, creating a 